The Habit of the Nun Chapter 5 Red Wine The night was coming. Fiordalisa was sitting on the corner of the bed. She was getting ready to rest, yet not before opening a bottle of her favorite red wine. A knock on the door distracted her. It was Sister Bertha. She asked. Sister Bertha, what are you doing here? Is everything okay? Bertha had an anxious expression on her face. Fiordaliso, please. Let me in for a moment. But Fiordaliso was not certainly ready to receive visits at that hour. Oh, sorry but I really can't right now. Let's talk tomorrow, sister. Go to your room now, before Mother Superior sees you around here. Bertha had a foot on the door, and Fiordaliso could not close it all the way. Then, with a very determined attitude, she said, Sister, I know you are drinking wine. Well, let's say that in that case. I could keep you some company. I love wine too. Don't be so selfish. Fiordaliso was very surprised to hear that. So she said, And how do you exactly know I drink wine? Sister Bertha looked down a little shy. Well, I was spying Mother Superior the other morning. She was here inside your room, looking at your stuff, while you went to Mass. She found a bottle of wine under your bed. Fiordaliso became a little upset, agitated, embarrassed, and confused. Oh my God. The truth is that I need to buy some more. Then she whispered. Bertha, come in. I wonder if you could help me get some from the store tomorrow, without getting in trouble. What do you think? Immediately Bertha smiled all excited and wanting to help for sure. She said. Oh indeed, of course. I will help you. Look, I will find some excellent red wine tomorrow. Okay. I better go now. Good night, sister. Fiordaliso closed the door. With a big breath, she walked towards the bed, sat down thinking deeply about the situation. Perhaps she already had a new bottle. Perhaps she lied to Sister Bertha. In any case, she drank until she became very tired and tipsy. Then she finally fell asleep. While she was sleeping, the shadow of a man was starting to take form. He appeared slowly walking towards her bed. Then, after staring at the young nun for a while with a nice smile on his face, very gently, he touched her arm. Fiordaliso opened her eyes, getting up slowly. She was then sitting on the bed very calmly. She turned on the light by the nightstand next to her to see who he was. Indeed, it was Jim, smiling and looking at her in the eyes. Then he said, Hello, beautiful lady. Would you like to dance with me tonight? She soon smiled back, as if she remembered who he was, and offered her hand. He gently grabbed it. Kindly he took her by the waist getting ready to make the first few steps, to start a beautiful romantic dance on the floor. He was able to make her feel his intense presence and to deeply touch her feelings and emotions. And they began to dance. It was all very romantic. The music was coming from nowhere. It was the most romantic melody ever existed at that moment. Fiordaliso was like in trance, she was happy and almost could not let go of him. They danced. All of a sudden, Jim whispered slowly something. Your name was Bella. Do you remember? Do you remember me? Do you remember us? Fiordaliso was recalling all of it. Then she asked. Jim, it's you. Oh my God. What? What happened? Please, please, don't leave me again. Take me with you, Jim. I can't stay here any longer. I need you. I always needed you so much. I love you. I love you so much. Take me with you. I beg you. A tear came down from his eyes. Then he said, Darling, 
That was another life for us. Now it's all different. You are here in this convent because you made a clear choice, and now you are a nun. You can't be with me. But Fiordaliso wasn't going to give up on him. No. I really don't care about the convent. I don't care about the church anymore, and I don't even care to stay alive after tonight, if I cannot be with you again. I don't care, Jim. I really love you. Then he grabbed her closer, trying not to show the tears coming down, and told her, Stop, darling. Stop talking and hold me tight. I had to see you one more time and dance with you. My love. At that moment Annie appeared, smiling, and hiding in the corner of two walls. She then flew on top of a bookshelf, sitting comfortably, ready to smoke a nice cigarette, while enjoying watching them dance from a distance. The following morning, Sister Bertha decided to go visit Mother Superior right after Mass. As soon as she got in front of her door, she became a little insecure. But she proceeded without knocking, rather, she decided to just walk in. She saw Mother Superior from the back, and called her out loud. Mother Superior, what are you doing? She was shocked to understand that the older nun was holding a bottle of red wine in her hands. Mother Superior jumped up, she didn't expect anyone to walk inside without knocking, and especially while she was holding a bottle of liquor. Immediately cleaned her mouth with the cloth of her black gown. Indeed, Mother Superior was caught drinking red wine. Bertha's mouth dropped open wide from the shock. Then she quickly recomposed, saying out loud, Oh, my dear. My good lord. Mother. What are you doing drinking wine? But the nun, even if very embarrassed and uncomfortable, soon answered. No, no, no. You are mistaken. This is the same bottle I found in Fiordaliso's room the other day. I was just reading the label and I was ready to toss it in the trash. However, Bertha could not help from taking that bottle from the nun's hands to read the label. Oh, it's a Merlot. Great red wine. Mother Superior did not appreciate her confident attitude around the bottle of wine, and soon scolded her. You are not allowed to just walk in here without first knocking. What's the matter with you, Sister Bertha? But Bertha was getting anxious and a little nervous, as she always was. Mother Superior, look at me. See how I came here? I have something very important to tell you. Fiordaliso did not show up for Mass this morning. It never happened before. Something is wrong. I can feel it. We need to do something. The old nun put the bottle away. Well, let me. Okay, let me put this bottle here, for now, later we'll throw it away. Let's go to Fiordaliso's room. You are both in big trouble now. An unpredictable loud hiccup came out of her mouth. <coughs> Indeed, it remained the last note in that room before they ran out. When they got to Fiordaliso's room, they realized that she was not answering the door. They continued to knock and call her name, but nothing, there was no answer. Then, Mother Superior in a hurry pulled out, from one of her big pockets, a huge set of keys, struggling a bit to find the right one. She was eventually able to succeed and opened up the door. They walked in to find the nun mumbling in bed. Totally wasted and completely drunk. Immediately Mother Superior called the other nuns to help with the situation. Several sisters came in a hurry, trying to help Fiordaliso. The whole day went crazy for everyone. By sunset, the doctor was called, since the young nun became unresponsive. The doctor came. A skinny old man, with circular glasses and a large leather bag, walked into the room to check her out. He asked everyone to leave him alone at once. Six nuns with Mother Superior were sitting outside Fiordaliso's room, in the yard, at least for a while. 
They were sad, worried, confused. Suddenly, one of them pointed a finger towards a lady walking by many feet away. That lady was walking suspended up in the air, through the gates of the convent. She was wearing a very nice dress, while she was holding a parasol in her hand. She crossed a thick wall, just like ghosts do, and she kept on walking in the same direction. Everyone was really shocked to see that. The strange lady noticed they were looking, so she started to smile waving gently with one hand. It was Annie that came closer and towards them to let them know something. It's all over, yes. I'm free now. Goodbye ladies, and great luck to y'all. Then she vanished gradually on the horizon. The sun had just set, the day was over, while the night was making a new entrance. The nuns began to chat loudly about the strange phenomena, then Mother Superior told everyone to go to sleep, asking that no one would talk about what just happened. The day was over. The first sun in the morning was warm and refreshing at the same time. The old nun walked into Fiordaliso's room, very confident and determined to have a serious chat. But right before she was able to knock, the doctor came out with some news. Mother Superior, I'm sorry to tell you this, but Fiordaliso is gone. Too drunk to live, I guess. I have to go now. The nuns then gathered and circled around her bed. The young nun, Fiordaliso, was resting in peace with a beautiful smile on her face. Her expression was illuminated by a special glow. Then they left the room gathering outside in the yard. All of a sudden, first one, then two, then three nuns noticed, very surprised and shocked, something in a distance and immediately called for the attention of the others, pointing fingers up in the air. Fiordaliso's ghost was walking in mid-air, happy, very happy, and smiling. She was holding hands with another ghost that became more visible shortly after. It was a man. A very handsome guy. Both of them turned around for just a moment smiling and waving goodbye to then vanish in their mystic walk. The nuns were extremely surprised to be a testimony of such a great event. They fell on their knee with their heads down to cry. They felt touched in their heart and started to pray to the good Lord. Fiordaliso found herself, her second half, and perhaps a new journey. Annie found her freedom instead. In truth, we can say that both women found freedom.